We got this big Montana in here. We're going to go up there and take a look at this thing. It is a large fifth wheel. So some of the concerns that we have right off the rip is a roof. Uh, right over here, right there where you see the Montana logo, a lot of D-Lamb, almost all the way down. And there's a slide out right here. And that slide out, the floor is rotted. So we're going to go find out all the mess we got. Right. So here we got. You see they patched this shoulder tremendously. A lot of issues here. And then this is where all that, I don't know if you can see it, but maybe you see that moving. It's not supposed to move like that. That's all be lambed. The water I'm sure was getting down here, getting behind. So, and then this is the slide out that's got the rotted floor. But this is the backboard. Put more on, more on. That's all they want you to do. More on. This is the patch we put on. That held pretty well. But you just want to make sure it wouldn't leak. You can tell that whole roof deck is gone. All right, here. So we're going to need a new roof deck. More than likely. Hoping we don't have too much issues with the shoulder. We may have to rebuild a few sections or fabricate up some new pieces for it. That's a possibility. So, and uh, you can see they had issues around the antenna. But this is that dike board stuff. We slobbered some on here. Because if you have one of these, this boot right here, when you have, water will come down. Maybe you can hear all that rain in the background but that is pouring out right now but water will trickle down here and get behind that boot if you have one of these pop this up load it and seat it back down if you have a crank up we're going to be replacing the crank up and then uh you got these here they're not really vents from what i understand they're access holes or something but they don't do anything in the coach uh, from what i understand they're supposed to be wires when you pop that cap off if you wanted to run like maybe solar or something you could access the wires um, that would stand to reason because there's a vent, it doesn't do anything because it can't draw anything. It's got to have a lower end to draw the air. That's the way a vent works. So you see we got wires coming out here for the camera. And that may be what it's for. So, I don't know. But it, it's not a vent. Uh, on a typical building, you would have to have on the top of the ridge or the roof at the top, you'd have a ridge vent or even a louver. And then at the lower end, like the gutter, you'd have a soffit vent and that's how it pulls but if you have no other means of draw you're not going to get any ventilation in there and there is no other means of draw through here so it's certainly not going to try to draw all the way up here not through the insulation because the insulation is blocking it uh, it isn't going to happen but uh, anyhow that's what we got so far and that's what we're working on we'll get this thing apart our first goal is to take everything off of here at least all the material to see how bad we got it and then we're going to have to probably stretch this apart so we can inspect the slide out. And uh, by the time we take all the rail off, we should be able to see how far down that D-land is and how bad it is. I'm hoping we don't have to cut right here, but I don't know if you can notice right here this little curve. This little, that's what it looks like. That looks like we're starting to release is right here. Uh, we just finished up a fifth wheel where the front bunk up there was just demolished and also the bathroom and that was a big project i hope we don't have to do the same here so we're going to find out here shortly check out the damage in our montana so my suspicion is where all this damage come from is what causes d lamb in here we're going to take all this off and then once we get all that, then we'll be able to look down behind the siding. And you see all this. Snag something right there for probably a tree branch. Snag that pretty good. That's what we got on this side. So we'll need at least a couple of decks of sheathing. We're going to check it all out anyway. So. And then uh, you can see how they have like these caps. 
So if these breach, you can see someone's sealed in there. Well, that's a piece of plastic. That lip edge is plastic. It's not talking. So if the cap did pop off, if this is breached like that, water is going to go down there. The way we do our, do our boots, it, it can't do that. So, and this may have happened when one of, one of us tried to pull this off. Because it's all chunk anyway, so we don't use it. But just keep that in mind when you go to inspect yours. Make sure those are sealed right there, even though the cap's going on it. You know, you're going to get driving rain and everything coming in from different directions. You want to make sure that's sealed. You can see all the slobber and the caulking all over this thing. Gee whiz. Alright, we'll show you more as we go along. Right now, we're protecting the coach and getting everything like the, the awnings here. And then we also put these panels from the inside. We put them up there. We don't want trash or anything getting inside there. You can see we got one in there as well. They're all blocked off. We want to make sure we keep your coach clean and keep debris out of it as much as we can at least. This is the driver's side. You can see right here, there's no caulking right here. No caulking at all. There's no caulking on the back or even butyl tape or anything. No means of sealing it. Nothing. It's like a hole right here. There's nothing on there. Wow. Yeah, you need to keep that sealed up well, real well. Here's another. So I was saying, if you have one of these, make sure they're sealed in there. You can, if that can move around like that, you could possibly get some water in it. Okay, I'm gonna give you an up a date. So this is just basically a, a radiant barrier, trying to keep it cooler. Typically they don't work um, unless there's a cavity up underneath here. And it's got to be about a three-quarter inch cavity according to Tech Shield. So it's here, but I don't know how good it's going to do. Maybe it does something, but in order for us to get this done properly, what we're going to have to do, and you get an aluminum frame here, we're going to have to cut it, drop it inside, and then what we'll do is glue it to here. So we got to cut all that and drop it in just to, so we'll be able to get some adhesive on the frame. So this is one of their aluminum frames. And even though, I mean, this thing is still, seems like it's got some wetness to it. So one of the other things we want to do is we peel back this insulation. And then I want to look at this. See that there? That's a metal ferrule. And this wire has been leaning that way. So let's see how good or bad that is. Look at the score that's doing. It's working its way in. That's terrible. And I tell folks, I say, you know, these RV companies, manufacturers, they won't spend one more penny than they have to. And I'll show you the fix, but that is a pretty good score in there. See if I can zoom up yet a little bit more. You know, that could work its way. Now we're going to check the rest of them. But some of the things, like some of them will have these inserts in there, which are good. You got a redhead over there. But by electrical code, you're supposed to protect the wire from this. Now this is just so no one puts a, puts a uh, fastener or a screw or something through it. There's no way we could take that out to put this in because of the way this is designed. We'd have to try to force the wires down, cut them, force them through. We're not going to do that. But what we do put in there, on commercial electrical work, they have a cable. It's called BX, and it's a flexible metal cable. And when you put uh, assemble those together, you use these. These are called redheads. And that's what I mean about another red scent. Ha ha ha, because they're red. But these just will slide right inside there. That one's probably a little too big. But I'll get another one that'll fit in there. We get all different sizes. This one may work. But you get the idea. And that'll slide down and it protects the wire from the ferrule. You see? That's how it works. So we'll get that seated kind of hard to work with a camera in one hand. So I want to, this is still wet right there. That is wet. So we're going to take that. I'm going to take this. Oh, that is soaked. That's why it's sticking on my fingers. This is wet right here. So we're going to get rid of that. And this is wet right here. Ooh. That's going to sit there. And 
this is wet. So we're going to get rid of all this wet insulation for sure. But now what I'm doing, pulling all this back, I want to see if we do have any more wires. And if we do, if we do have some more wires, I want to know about it so we can get them fixed up. So we get all this that was rotted. We pulled all that up. There it all is, right here. And we're gonna uh, just might as well pull the rest of these up, and then we're just gonna put down some half-inch plywood probably on this thing. So that's what we got there. We can go check the other side. So we got a blower going right now. I'm gonna try and get this thing dried out. But I want to make sure all the wires are all good as well. Come on the other side here. See what we may have. This is a lot drier. There's nothing, doesn't seem to be any issues here. They did put some glue in here. That's a plus. There's you know obviously no glue on the trusses. But that's how they typically do them. They glue them all together anyways, and then they set the panel down, one big panel. So. I'm gonna work my way down, see if there's any other wires. We're gonna be looking for them. So, so here's here's some out here. That's all it needs is just that little a little plastic piece in there. They're pennies. If they're pennies for me, I'm sure they pick them up for half a penny. I want to make sure they're not compromising these wires here. Or in, in, that they won't do it in the future. So well, that's where we are so far with this big old Montana. And then uh, one I understand we got some slide out issues and some other stuff too, but we can't address those yet because we got the scaffolding right here up against the coach on both sides. Alright, we're getting again. some new decking on here. This sheet goes all the way up underneath there. We would have to argue just to get that right. So we just said forget it. We'll start here. There's nothing wrong with it. So start here, move on. Get all our adhesive down here. We cut these back so we can get onto the frame. We want to glue onto the frame. So that's what we did. We got all our lines laid out. I'm going to screw it all back down. Please. Be nice and tight. Yeah. Probably got cushions on there so we don't mar up the cushions on the ladder. Montana! Look at all this D-Lamb. This is a slide out. We got some work on it too, right there on the floor of the slide out on the inside. That's rotted. And then this is all the all the damage from here. That's from if you remember from the first part of the video, the shoulder that was up there that had a hole in it, all that water wearing down here. So now we gotta free all of this up and we gotta put a new sheet in there. And then we gotta try and glue it all back. Gotta clean this piece up too, the main fiberglass as well. So. A little bit of work here. It's uh, kind of a mess. All right, so we got this all rolled over, and you saw how we were trying to get it all freed up. But it's already over here. We only got that much, so we're going to go and loosen up all the trim around that slide out, make a relief cut there. We're going to take it down as one piece so we can work it. It's just easier because that rot seems to be going further and further over that way but it's going on an angle and it's just going to make it hard for us to piece it in and it's going to be frustrating to try to finagle this it's easier for us to take it down all right so we had to take that whole piece out and barely right over here this area that looks like the only part that's stuck and then while we're trying to loosen it up it looks like the from the factory the luon wasn't quite stuck that's why you see the foam so obviously anything that's not stuck it's coming off or anything that looks compromised it's all coming off that's what we're on now. It's still wet. But it was, yeah, it looks like it's still a little damp up there. So we need to get remove all of that. All of it, all of it, all of it. Even over there above that slide out, we got some issues. So issues out there. So we is gonna skin it like a gator. Just just slice it right down. That's what we're gonna do. It's gonna look all pretty. All pretty. You can see what we've got here. So the other thing we just did is, uh, well, maybe about an hour ago, we sprayed some uh, mole kill on there. I want to make sure everything is all mold kill. If we have any compromised issues, we'll probably get that off. Don't want to leave that in the wall. 
and then we'll go show you what we got on the inside. Right. Now, on the inside, slide out is out. You can see all the flooring is just destroyed. So that obviously that's what we got to take out. But here's the other thing that we come across: this uh, padding up underneath here. That there, it's just got a lot of mold on it. So that's going to come up. And then the carpet right here. You can see the carpet's all ruined right here. But the worst part is the back of the. You can see the mesh on the back there, the backing. But on here, it's pretty much looks like it's all destroyed. We're going to clean it. We're going to see what he wants to do. If we can't get that clean, uh, we may have to patch it in somehow. Or, but I'll give the customer a call and find out the direction he wants to go. So right now what we're doing is we're just supporting that slide out. It's extended as far as it'll go, which is great. So obviously you can see we removed the bed and all that frame. So we just want to make sure that it doesn't rock around any more than it needs to. And um, we'll get to be cutting this out. We're going to check all that insulation in there. And yet again, more mold kill, more mold kill. You can never use enough of that stuff when you get them into this. Alright, we've got our roof on our Montana. And we redecked this. Oh, I'm not sure if I showed all that, but we redecked it. Obviously, we got the roof down. And uh, we put new decking down on top of it. So, I know you probably can't see it all in there, but that's... And in there. Or we redecked it. Screwed it all back down, glued it back down, everything's all done. Check the wires and all that stuff. So now what we gotta do is just get our curves mounted up on here. And right now we're just throwing some blankets down, make sure we don't booger up the roof and kind of minimize some of the cleaning, even though this one got a little dirtier than expected. But uh, it'll all come clean. We'll wash it. So that's what we're working on. Well, we got the floor out. So strenuous, he passed out trying to get all of this free. <laughs> and now we gotta get a new sheet in here. That's beautiful. Ah, got some bendage there. That's from where the slide out rolls. That's some heavy duty aluminum. It does. Is it the same on this side? Kind of a little bit, not as bad. Yeah, no that's cross, a cheap alloy. It ain't got no cross supports on this side. Oh, it doesn't have the same as that one? Mm -hmm. look at, oh, we're gonna strengthen that mess up. We need to put like three, probably three sixteenths, maybe quarter inch steel plate in here, I think. I we'll go, we'll go get a crane, lower one in. Then the thing be riding cockeyed down the road all the way down. Alright, <laughs> so, trying to figure out why this thing collapsed. But oh, it's easy to figure one, out. One, one, There's one, one welded there <laughs> and one weld there. There's nothing on this side. So of course it's going to collapse. Gee whiz. So the piece itself seems to be okay. Got that tiny little bend in there, but that's nothing. We probably could stitch that back together. But they're all like that. That one is yeah. one little pissant weld on each side. Uh, someone didn't go to welding school 101 where welds only work on one side. Let us get to work. We've got our repairs done. We got some 16 gauge steel in there. We fixed that piece up underneath there too. Stitched it all together. And then we even glued it all in place. So now we just put our sheet on. Uh, we're going to go back with carpet. And um, we're going to possibly put in a laminate. But um, the laminates are really not recommended for RVs. I'm going to show you that here in a second. Alright, this is what the customer selected that we picked up over at Home Depot. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure it gets installed properly. And they come with these handy dandy installation precautions and so forth. Go right here, see if I can focus in on it. Let's see. Do not install in any outside areas, surrounds, solariums, saunas, seasonal porches, camping, trailers, boats, RVs, three seasonal rooms, lanai's, rooms that are prone to flooding, uh, or homes that are not temperature controlled. So, they don't recommend it. Matter of fact, no manufacturer does. Um, and the reason for that, which I would like to know, hey, why not? Well, I know it expands and contracts, so I called the company, and I spoke with their tech, 
and they say the products are typically designed for 50 degrees to 100 degrees. So as you're using it, it's probably within maybe 60, 70 degrees, maybe even 80. But in the summertime, if it's sitting and you don't have uh, air conditioning going to kind of keep it cool, and if it reaches over 100 inside the coach, then that's going to compromise the product. In the wintertime, it falls below 50, it's going to compromise the product. So that's why uh, we're not going to install it. We're going to put the carpet back. And I know a lot of people say, hey, you know, I've put it in this and that. That's, that's great. I'm glad it probably worked out for you. But uh, in our shoes, I can't put it down because the manufacturer says, do not do it. I don't want to have any failure. And then a customer get upset that we put it in and it wasn't recommended for it. So for that reason, we're just going to go back with the car. Right, now we're just getting this sheathing set in here. And then now we're going to start getting our carpet in. So we're just trying to adjust it because it's very, very tight. That's the way we like it. So you can't get anything longer than an eight footer. So we'll put a splice in here and glue it all together and all that jazz and it'll be done. There's also a big sheet of steel in there like we showed you earlier. So we're going to stitch it all together and then it'll be nice and tight. Uh, this is uh, a Montana that we are, this refrigerator. So you see all these wires here. Obviously someone has replaced this cooling, cooling unit right here. And you can see there's, if that's all yellow, you see yellowing in there and there's a valve right here. So we want to see if that thing is leaking. So we, the way to do that is you take a sulfur stick and you heat up the sulfur stick like right here and you'll see the white smoke coming out of this valve which means this thing is leaking. See that white smoke coming out of there? Very faint. Because where the, the but it's coming out. Where the sulfur meets the ammonia then it turns into ammonium sulfate. And there's where your leak is right there on your stem. You can barely see it right in there. But over a period of time, it's, it goes it's down. It's going to drain. Yep. It's going to drain gonna out, go and then your refrigerator is going to be dead. Yep. All right. More tips from RV Roof Install. This is the old unit. We've already got it out for, to the refrigerator. There's a new one here. So we got to replace all this, and uh, we just got to prep it so it can go in. But um, that's uh, where it was leaking. We already showed you on there. But it was on this fitting. And it's just problematic to try to see if you can fix that. You don't know. And even if you do, right here, even if you do, all of this gas may escape. And if it does, you have to recharge the system. By the time you do all that, you just might as well get a new cooling unit. And that doesn't mean that this is even okay, even if you did that. So we don't know if there's something wrong with that fitting, because that's where it was leaking from. So uh, the customer just said, put a new one in. And then this one is an upgraded one for Norcold. It's upgraded. So it's not a nor cold per se, but it's a nor cold upgraded replica. So much better. There's a, so what they've done is they found out all the bugs that were wrong to these, like this and different things. And what they've done is uh, upgraded it so you don't have all those issues with it. All right, so now we're going to prep it and we're going to get we've it got in our cooling unit going back in. All righty. Look how nice and pretty that is. Lovely shade of beige. We're going to retitle this the Runaway Elephant. I think that's what it should be. We come around and we are trying to do all the caulking around all the molding, all the slide outs. So I like to seal up underneath on these slide outs as well. I'll show you over here. I like to try to seal all this. You know, you get water that comes in here and here and then. This, you see that indentation right there? Well, that's kind of like what's going on there, because they're not supposed to do that. So, water can come down in here on this fascia. This is the fascia trim that comes down, goes across. Water will get down in here. When it does, it'll trickle, it'll go back in. And when it does, it'll be up on, on, the under, on the top side of this, and it'll rot this out. Very important to know that. You can see some rustiness in here, but I've, uh, I'm going to show you the other side. This is very important to seal these. Very important to seal these little screws right here. When you take these out, you want to take the one screw out at a time if you're going to do it. Take one out, put some caulking in it, put screw back. Take one screw out, put some caulking in it, screw back. Take another one out, same thing, all the way through, okay? You want to do that. 
then you don't have to worry about water getting around behind the head of the screw and trickling it. These are a lot, like 90% of what we deal with is chronic leaks, chronic things that have taken time and time to, uh, you know, to cause the damage. So all that being said, walk under here. Uh, look at that mess. This whole slide up, and we were about ready to deliver this. And we got under there, started caulking this, and we're like, holy cow. So it was soft, and then you can see this thing is absolutely rotted out. So it's not just that sheathing, though. I'm going to see if I can get that light up there. Let's see if I can get this light angle. Look at all the framing. Rotted. Look at that. Oh, that wasn't cool. Probably should have shut the fan off. Look at that, it was rotted up in there. See? It's all rotted in there. We're going to wait for this to dry out before I start doing all this. And we're going to see the best way we can attack this thing to get it fixed without actually taking the slide out, out. But gee whiz, we have done a boatload of work to this poor Montana, which is, which is great. It'll be done. But at the same point, these are some of the things that if you're going to buy one of these coaches, if you are, let me show you how this, right, here are the screws. I'll show you the screws. So this will be an indicator. Let me shut this light off. It's about ready to fall out of my hands. All right. These are all the screws that come out. You can see how rusty they are. These are all the screws there. Up underneath here, come around this side so you can see maybe a little better. See this molding? Take that screw out, that screw out. That, it's just a number two square job. If you're gonna buy it, no one's gonna care that you just take one screw out or a couple screws out. Now, if you take those screws out and they're all rusty, the whole shank of the screw is, you probably got some problems. Also, what I do is I come under here, nice and solid. You punch here, that's obviously not, right? So that's how you can check them to make sure that they're solid. Because these are common leaks on these things. So, Keep that in mind, because the last thing you want to do is someone say, ah, everything's fine, no problem, and you, you all you have to do is take a couple screws out for an indicator, and then you can go, hey, I don't know if I like this or that, and you can do a little bit more exploration on it, but um, again, this it's too too expensive to have to do all this stuff, especially when you're trying to buy one and you're hoping there's no issues with it. So, But um, when this thing dries out a bit more, then uh, we're gonna see all what we can do and how we're gonna attack this thing. Obviously, another clip will come after this. Get the floor out. That rot that I thought was rot in the framing, because I didn't know how quite it was framed. I thought maybe it was framed with a box assembly for the furniture to sit on, but actually it was the sofa. The sofa's rotted right there. That was all that stuff we were looking at. So, I'm gonna see how bad it is. We may be able to peel it out and I don't know. We'll see. If not, you just might need a new sofa. Because the rest of it looks fine, but nonetheless, I don't... We'll see. Here's the floor. There's the wall side right here, the edge of the slide out. That's where the furniture was sitting. That's when, it, when the carpet was down like that, when, we were, when it was down and we were looking up this way. We saw that rot that was on the sofa that I just showed you. But, um, let's see if I flip this up a little bit. That's a lot of rot. Obviously, new carpet. So now we got to put another piece in. So as I check this slide, the lower wall right there, I come over here because I wanted to take that out, see what was going on. And this is the panel in front of me. Let's observe. Let's observe. He's got tenants. He's got tenants. Beat it. Been evicted. Sheriff setting your stuff out. So since we got that all off, then uh, we're looking at the panel here. You can see that stain up there. This is to the outside, right behind this fiberglass. This isn't even Luon. That's MDF. MDF stands for medium dense fiberboard, aka dinner bell for bugs. That's what it is. When the bugs go in the restaurant, they go, would you like some MDF? That's what it is. But it does, they, they eat that stuff up. It's like Masonite. Same thing. Uh, Masonite had a recall for like 18 years. Recall on siding. That's crazy. Yep, it was a long time. <laughs> I'm sure they lost a little bit of money. 
But anyhow, so now we're going to see what we can do to negotiate that. Obviously, any bad insulation come out. We're going to see if we can just cut that out and just work the lower end. Don't know. Lots to think about, because now I'm looking at this, and I'm wondering about this stuff here. So I'm getting all curious about everything. So let's, uh, we'll step back and take a look. So now we tore out the floor. Look at the wall here. Oh, man, it just keeps getting worse. All this was just wet, so we took it all out. And then on this other side, same problem. And this MDF, it's not even Luan, it's MDF, so we're going to try to get this out without taking the slide out. out. That's, that's, our, that's our goal. Same thing with that. I'm going to try and get that out without taking that out. Got a couple ideas. I don't want to have to take this out. It'd just be a bigger expense. If I can work it another avenue, I'm going to try it. And um, then if it doesn't come the way we want, we may have to pull it. But, and the other one over there is the same way. That slide out floor is rotted we don't know what the walls are doing yet so I'm trying to work one at a time this is the other floor we're just about to hoover to the dumpster i said let me get a video on that look at all that there Gee whiz. that can't be good for your health yeah don't lick your fingers after that that wouldn't be good but see all this here that's called spalting it's when mold and a fungus infects the wood and it changes the grain. They use it a lot on instruments. So we may be able to make a guitar out of this or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so now we got pretty much a similar problem as we did with this slide out over here. Walls, they're wet up underneath here. You can see all this here. This doesn't, this is, we're gonna inspect this better to see if it's just wilted, so to speak, or and dry, but uh, over oh, in this one, this one is wet. And you can see how dark it is, that's wet. So that definitely has to be cut. And then we're gonna check the rest of this. We, you know, even if we have to just come up and tear paper off for now and go around, I wanna see what's underneath all that. I don't wanna put it back together if it's got problems. See, a lot of that, there's a, the, this, this is a, a fascia piece right here. There's another one that goes here. When the water goes down, then leaves here it kind of wicks the water up and it'll start rotting and then when that can't really hold it anymore or wick up anymore then, the, then it'll start traveling back and that's where it starts getting into all of this and then this starts wicking all the water up and into the floor like it did you saw the floor that we took out so you know that's how all this kind of how the water is traveling that's why it's super important to always seal these you want to caulk everything everything needs to be caulked you know, if you don't go around caulk like all around the doors, even inside the doors, we're going to go around on this coach, but, you know, that's something that you need to do. So if you're watching the video, after you're done watching it, go check your own coach because you probably need caulking. So I don't like this, and we're going to seal that, but that's another piece. That's telling me water could probably get in that little crack there, right? And then on the side here, I'm trying to design a little gutter that'll fit in here and come out and kind of drain all that. So I haven't got that in my head yet, but I'm working on it, on how I can do it. Maybe I'll let this one will probably be easier to do than that one over there. So, but I'm trying to figure something where it'll sit up on this shelf right here. So any water that does come in and maybe get past the little slide out gasket right there, come around this pole here, that may get in here. And as it comes down, I don't want water to get in there. So I'm hoping I can make like a little cup or a little spout of some sort so it'll just drool out and I may try to see if I can get a diverter. I've made up a few of those in the past, but without the cup on this, I don't think the diverter would help. But I have made diverters where the water will come down, it'll hit, yeah, get over there, and then it'll drool out this way. But anything that may go over do that, then maybe it'll hit that cup. But I gotta give it some thought. I mean, it's just piss poor engineering. That's all it is. Um, they should have had another this recessed if they had this recessed from the factory you know, just mold it in there on a ramp then it would have came right out but there's not even really a bottom sweet gasket on these either so all that weather is just coming in and it's just going to roll right back onto the uh, plastic piece that they have up underneath here that underbelly it'll just keep rolling back in and not want to start rotting out the floor so that's what we're working on right, so we get some water damage there so we're going to have to do the same thing cut it We'll slide another piece up. That's how we were able to do it. We actually we cut it, released it from the underside on the on the opposite side there. We were able to do that and slide up without having to take the slide out. out. Obviously, this here will get all. We're going to put uh, rigid foam. We did rigid foam over there as well. 
and we epoxy it back in. You gotta do the same thing here. So it's the same twin brother, I guess, over there. And we're gonna see just, this is obviously damaged. That looks like it's pretty much dry, just stained. So we'll see if it's not solid and it's soft and it'll come out. So we just gotta, when we get up there in, in a second here, we'll check it out. But that's who we are. Whew, a lot of work in this big old Montana. Now let's take a look at our Montana. So we had to do the pump, so we wrapped that over there with uh, some wallpaper. The logs, that log look. You can see we got all new carpeting and everything in here. Looks jazzy. So we get all that. And then we also had to do the slide outs up here. So we put all those back together. A new car, you probably can't see too much of it because they plopped all the furniture back. The uh, the owner just come by and took a look at it. You can see, well, you can kind of see the new cover there. It kind of matches. It's not perfect, but you probably can't see very much of it anyways. Well, we got all that squared away. It's been a big, big project. This is a 2011, by the way. I was wondering what it was. It's 2011. Now we'll go up and take a look at the roof. All right. So we've got a logo on here, rvroof.pro. Not dot .com, dot .pro. We've got two licks of caulking around everything, boots welded. We've got the stands on the back of the air conditioner to give it some balance. All our curves welded in. There's a 60 mil Carlisle TPO is what it is, a thermoplastic. So you can see even the plumbing, get that the same way. Everything's all heat welded. The whole system is all heat welded. So you don't have all that die core on there. So there's no need to put moron. You don't need to be a moron with this system. This is moron free. That's right. Same thing with the front AC. So we've also got a front, a front counter flash right here. And that's so when the water does come down, as it's trickling down, that it will uh, go past, our, we have counter flashing on the curbs. And it'll go past the counter flashing on the curbs and roll out. That's the whole idea of that. So you don't have any issues with water building up. Then we put two strikes of caulking all over everything. It could, it could stand to be washed, but the, uh, the owner is eager to get this back. Like he is here now saying, get this thing freed up, right scaffold apart, let me get out of here. So, but other than being washed, everything is, is, uh, is all done. We've got the new insert trim that we put in here. That insert trim snaps in and over the track. I've showed that a few times. So uh, let's see if I had it here, I would show it to you again. But like you said, I'm trying to just do a half decent video so you can see basically what we got going on. And um, got some new skylight in there. Made a custom curb for that uh, antenna right there. You see the counter flash in the front of that right there. Got the stands. So all of it's ready to go. But uh, we don't sell any of these products at all. We don't sell anything at all, actually. Nothing. Um, and these aren't DIY videos. These are videos that we normally do so the owner can see how much work we've put into them. But And what we've uncovered as the process is going on. But uh, they're not tutorials or anything like that. You know, if you get a tip out of it, great. But it's not intended to be a tutorial by any means. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that we do that we just couldn't possibly video every step of the way. So, well, we appreciate you watching. And this, uh, like I said, this is a 2011. And uh, it is really overstayed its welcome. Thanks for watching.